Hi, good afternoon. A uh, um, little bit of accent. I'm French. I was living 20 years in Brazil, so it's kind of difficult to match my accent. But hopefully, I'm going to be. Uh, uh, you're going to understand my uh, what I'm going to try to present you. Um, so, TEDS uh, as this. Thank you very much for the introduction, is that uh, we really enter into the space as a business-to-business -business company. That's why you never heard about us, probably. When we, when we think about YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, we are all users. So we are, we are with our familiarity is not uh, uh, j just as advertiser and mostly as a uh, uh, user. With TIDS, we basically are a marketplace. We uh, intermediate relationship between publishers that professionally produce their content and marketers. And we have created a platform that allow us to reach a massive scale. But what I want to do today uh, is that I've been in the other side all the time in events. And I think that the real value of a, a chat like that is basically exchanging knowledge. So I'm going to bring all what we have learned in the last year that are really valuable in terms of mobile advertising inside this presentation, I, I hope that uh, you're going to find it interesting. So let's go ahead. First thing, we run a huge amount of video advertising. And uh, what we uh, have seen is that most of the, the content was created for this large screen and for a screen where the sound is relevant. And uh, the reality is that when you take this uh, landscape video and you put it on a mobile device, it's not uh, every time the best format to create impact and engage people. And it's not only about the format, it's also the way that the storytelling is done. We, in advertising, I worked 12 years in advertising in Brazil, we are used to create a build-up approach as a storytelling. And in, in mobile advertising, the attention is dropping too fast to have this approach. So this is one of the first challenge. The second challenge we all heard of, but I want to show you a data. PNG is a close client to TIDS. They are uh, uh, increasing year over year uh, uh, media spending inside TIDS. And here, it's, the, it's a public data. That, so Mark Pritchard has been very vocal about the, the time spent uh, in social media for their video advertising. And here, it's a... Uh, it's this data, 1.7 seconds. And 1.7 seconds, we, we need to ask ourselves, what are we able to build? What are we able to do with the consumer? I, I believe that you are not able to do anything. Like uh, people, they will say, no, brain awareness, not valuable. Like brain awareness in TV would be a five seconds. Like you're presenting your brand, your logo, and it, maybe a tagline. But 1.7 seconds, it's nothing. Uh, with TIDS, we ran a lot of different campaigns, and within our environment, because people are reading an article, and you will see a couple of examples, our in-view time, measured by third party, it's 11.6 seconds. Now you start, you start the conversation with the consumer. It's possible to engage him and generate some kind of emotion. So attention span is shorter in mobile. Yes, it's shorter. But as a marketer, my, my bigger advice is that you should not be working for platforms. The, the platforms need to work for you. If they have issues in terms of in-view time, that's their problem, not yours. Uh, last, last thing that is a big challenge is the fact that in mobile, and it's obvious, you know, we are always on the go. You are with people around. You prefer to consume content and video without sound. It's a question of privacy. It's common sense. And nowadays, there's a couple of research that indicate that a lot of users actually are kind of enjoying content that is optimized for sound off. So for example, I'm a World Economic Forum uh, um, uh, follower on Instagram. Typically, the videos that they done, that they do, the, the sound is completely accessory. It's like a white, uh, 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 how do you say, um, a free music. But the content is going to basically show videos, scenes, and captions, so big words, so the, the sound is not uh, relevant. And advertising should do the same. OK, so our point of view was never to disrupt the industry. We should embrace the industry. I'm very passionate about advertising. I joined uh, the advertising industry because as a kid, I always enjoyed it. But it's obvious that considering the size of the, of the screen and the challenge that we have, we need to adapt it. And we need to be aware uh, of what the consumer 
uh, and how the consumer will engage with brands. So that's what we think at TIDS, that it's time to create a new playbook. And I'm going to basically uh, um, share with you a couple of tips and with practical examples. So something that is really obvious about advertising, it's about creating emotion, right? We uh, at TIDS, we have a, a partnership with a company called Realize that has a panel of consumers all around the world, and we present them content, video, and when the advertising, the video advertising enter, the front camera film the facial uh, uh, reaction, micro expression. So that allow us to understand what is the, the kind of emotion, if it's confusion, if it's a negative or positive emotion. Happiness, feeling happiness when you're watching advertising will be a major lift in brand recall and purchase intention. We are talking about business here. It's not, uh, you know, taking a light and uh, seeing what, at what angle uh, you have more light in the room. So I want to share uh, something that has been said in the industry is that now video advertising is only six seconds. Bumper ads, you don't need any more than 30 seconds. Uh, sorry, that's, that's uh, really a mistake because this was a huge research that we did with 166 ads from different verticals and brands. And you can see here that obviously shorter content will generate uh, uh, um, an, an emotional score that will not be higher as bigger or longer form of content. It's normal because in six seconds, it's more difficult to engage the user and, and, and create some kind of emotion. Something interesting in this graph, there is a, call, uh, there is a uh, when you look at the red line, it's the drop of attention in digital. The blue line is the emotional score. So you can see that it's kind of true that a good format for mobile for video advertising is 15 seconds, not six. 15 seconds, you can really communicate a lot of emotion and you have a drop of attention that is uh, reasonable, at least in a, in a good uh, platform. So the most uh, obvious tip that I can share here is an example from a PNG campaign, but for me, like it's it's not about digital. It's it's it, it's a 15 second ad. I don't even know if there, it was done only for digital, but I didn't even run the video yet. But the first image called your attention. That's a very old concept in advertising. That's called uh, um, um, brand impact uh, or, or the, per, the yeah the impact of the advertising. So the first second. Uh, are critical to generate some kind of impact on the user. You are not used to see someone inside the sand in this kind of situation. And then you run the video. Okay, the product enter the scene quickly. Clean your beard with Old Spice Beard Wash. Nice. So advertising can be enter entertaining, can be a, sometimes a little bit about art, but it's about selling products. So for me, the first tip that I would tell you is that since the attention in digital is limited, a good story is a story that will be entertaining, impactful, but put the product at the center. And you can play with the format. So on the six second ad research that we did, we found, we found out that all the brands that have leverage the six second format and tell a story instead of just editing your 30 second ad with pack shot and branding and product. Uh, for this example, in Mexico, it's a campaign from uh, Danette. Uh, the kid you will see, or oh, in Spanish, it's, it's, the question is, uh, how can you enjoy your last Danette when you have your last Danette in the, in the, in the uh, refrigerator? So I'm going to play it. So they are playing with the format. They are telling a story. They are trying to impact you with the story. So that's, that's, this ad is part of a 25% of high performance six second ad. And what we have found is that all of them, they were committed to tell a story in six seconds. But always, can you see product at the center? This is advertising. I know it's a CPG brand, but if it was a service, you, sh you should have the service at the center. Second thing. I talk about sound off. So the fact that I'm going to also share a couple of research that we did. So we found that basically when we 
run, we run 90 different brands from, again, 90 different uh, verticals. And we found that the average emotional score of those videos, when we test them on people with sound and the same video without sound, the emotional score is equal. Exactly the same. But that's not the relevant data. The relevant data is the next one. There is a situation where sound on, sound off, the same ad, one third of them have the same score, exactly the average. But there is one third of the videos that we sound off perform better than we sound. Strange. I, was, I, I felt surprised. And then you have 33% of the rest or 34% of the rest that sound on perform the best. And I can tell you, I watch all the ads. The one that are performing the best in sound on, usually there's a human being looking at the camera and he's talking. And it's obvious that if the emotion depends on what he's saying, we sound off the performance in terms of emotion will be obviously lower. So what we can do, what we do at TID, so this is our environment. You are in a Condé Nast publication, Vice, or BuzzFeed, several different publishers. And we receive on the right, this is the TV commercial. And on the left, our motion desi designer have inserted captions. So the, the, the concept of captions, it's not subtitles. Subtitles is very disruptive in digital, in mobile, it doesn't work. Uh, caption is really understanding what are the key words of your, of your content and showing them inside the video. So the same thing that I was saying about the World Economic Forum, it's the same approach. And the, in this case, we adapt it afterward. Ideally, the brand should make this on the script, you know, like the, your agency should be presenting a video uh, that has already incorporating captions. Uh, another, an, an, a third uh, tip that we have is that understand that it's possible with your creative asset, with your brand asset, to remix them. So for example, here in France, they were launching, uh, Canal Plus was launching this new series. It's available on Netflix and it's good. Uh, they, they sent us this asset. It was a key visual, static. Uh, with our motion designer, we adapt it in a cinemagraph. Do I need to convince you that this is more impactful than the static image? I don't think so. It's kind of obvious, right? Uh, same thing in terms of remixing assets. Joy, Joy Dior with Jennifer Lawrence. 60 second ad, no product, no brand. This scene. This scene, I knew that it was delivering a lot about the brand proposition. I was at the HQ, they told me many times why, why Jennifer Lawrence was, was chosen for this. And also that this scene in particular, it wasn't in the script. She was super spontaneous. And this is the territory of the brand. So we extract this scene and we create a format that deliver you the brand, the product, a call to action and give control to the user. So suddenly, you are reading an article, and you can say, oh, I don't like ads inside article. I respect your opinion. But you know, this is impactful for the user. So in terms of stats, we have an average. We ran this in many different countries, nine different language, seven seconds in view time. So there's platforms that are trying to convince you that you can do marketing with three second videos. We do display with seven seconds in view time average. 10% of the audience had this unit for 13 seconds in script, in screen. One, two, three, 13 seconds. That's a lot. Uh, for a tip is that we are talking so much about data and as a marketer, there was a presentation that's, that was what uh, uh, concerned you more as a CMO and one of the things was the use of data. Because, you know, it's overwhelming. There's too much data. I want to share something with you that is a DCO. It's a dynamic creative optimization that we did. But most importantly, I want to share with you the briefing that we received. Because when you have a huge amount of data, obviously you can create dynamic creatives. But will it be useful? Will it be relevant to do it? That's the real question that we need to ask ourselves. So Downey is a washing clothes uh, product from PNG again. Uh, so we create that. This is the TV commercial. She's happy. Her clothes are smelling good. And she's protected. You know, like bad, bad other. Uh, she's protected with the product. But when we were receiving the, the briefing, 
the client told us, hey, maybe the consumer doesn't trust us so much about this promise because, you know, it's kind of a, this magic uh, effect on the clothes. Yeah, okay, entertaining, but maybe they won't trust us. But so they were, they were talking not only with kids, there was like Oath, Facebook, Google, some uh, production content company specialized in creating some kind of PR activation events. Everyone in the room, and in the excess of honesty, the client starts saying, hey, I'm not sure that the campaign is going to work. Uh, actually, we really need to fight against the, the enemies. And we were the only company that delivered a solution really simple for us, like this is daily, daily, daily uh, work. So we used, we leveraged the signal of the time of the day. So from 5 to 11 a.m., dynamically, we are showing the reason to believe below. That is, the product will protect you against the pollution. Because the client told us that in the morning, uh, our consumer is more concerned about that. Then what's next after 11 a.m.? Lunch. You're planning to have lunch, or you're, going, you're at lunch, or you come back from lunch, and you're smelling that beef or fish or whatever, right? So dynamically, after 11 a.m., we show the other, reason, the other reason to believe, that it will protect you against uh, others, bad others from lunch. And then for the end of the day, the client was saying, yeah, I can't tell the, the consumer that because he was active all day, it's smelling bad. It's, I can't tell him that. So we said, OK, we can just say that it will protect you against a long day, a long journey. But so this is very simple, just three variation leveraging one signal but the client was so happy that they were able to, to basically deliver something that was mandatory, that was important for them. So data, I think that the excess of data is making all of us uh, being afraid of it. And I think we just need to embrace it. Fifth trend, uh, this is a beautiful baby. Again, Pampers, I, I work a lot with PNG. Uh, and with PNG, it's always hard to innovate, right? And they launched uh, this uh, diaper in Mexico. Again, it was uh, Latin America. It was a diaper with more air, air channel. And because uh, there's more air channel, oh, let me pause it up. OK. Because it was with air channel, we create this unit. We use the frame of this beautiful baby at the beginning, and we are inviting the user to click on the unit and blow the cell phone. Because it's about air, right? So what happened? Let's go again. I'm reading the article on Mashable, and I see this baby. I click. I authorize the microphone. And it happened that. Purpose with air channels. And it goes, uh, it gives you the reason to believe or the benefits. And OK. So I'm not saying that uh, all the media budget of the campaign should be on this single unit, but maybe for 5% of your audience, 10% of your audience that will have this experience of interacting with the unit by blowing the cell phone, you will create a more memorable experience and a more relevant experience because let's just remember it's about the diaper that has more air, right? And we have been the first company, tech company, to create an AR uh, experience that was available within a browser without downloading an app, but at scale. Because obviously, you can go on L'Oreal website and, and make an AR experience to, to experiment makeup, for example, but it's just in, inside uh, L'Oreal website. We are doing that in, uh, I don't know, 6,000 publishers in the world. So it, it's really it's, it's scalable. You can reach. Uh, more than 1 billion, 1.4 billion unique users a month. So in this case, it was a campaign for Armani. They were basically launching. This is the, the execution for women. There was an execution for men as well. Again, you allow the access to the camera, and you can experiment the sunglass. In this case, we could download the image, but uh, like the next project, we, we will enable the consumer to share it directly on their social media. I want to show you. Uh, I want to show this uh, campaign, the tales of Thomas Burberry. So, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm showing the AR execution and this example of this campaign, that is a three-year or four-year-old uh, campaign from Burberry. It was. I didn't even uh, say that. Sorry about that. It was about taking risk. That's my sixth tip. Uh, taking risk. It's fundamental. Like, invest five percent on your budget on stuff that you will that will break you. That will, that will remove uh, your safety. 
because probably it's exactly those 5% that will give you the oxygen for the next year. You will learn so much and you will be inspired and you will be, you will be able to be a true leader. So in this case, I'm gonna show you this, this ad. It's a very long ad, uh, probably several million dollars in terms of production. And uh, I'm sure that it's a huge amount of risk for, for a CMO to approve this kind of, uh, of execution. And when you look at it, it's not only the length. You're talking about a story that is about the, the founder of the company, uh, uh, amazing actors. You're gonna see that the video is recorded in several locations. It's a real Hollywood uh, trailer. So let's, let's watch it a little bit. No one sees the world like my Tom. I intend to lead a group of men to the Antarctic, and I'm looking for someone to supply the entire expedition with protective clothing. What is this? It's what you've been looking for. People come to me with their dreams. Betty Dawson is going to attempt the impossible. So it goes she on. She plans yeah, to break the world record and London UK down in 48 hours. It goes on. It's a story, it's a trailer. Do you want to see the full movie? Miss Dawson. Yeah, right? Yeah, people ask for it. <laughs> so what is this conversation about six second ad? Like, uh, oh, now advertising mobile needs to be, no, it depends. And maybe it's a small part of your audience, maybe it's 0.5% of the global audience that is asking for the full movie, but I would ask you the following question. Having 0.5% of your audience globally, that will be probably your best advocate, watching a movie of two hours about the founder of your brand? What's the value of that? And I would do even, a far, uh, I would do something that even maybe is darest, like more bravest than that. Maybe you should do a series, seven years, seven seasons. Your next launch of product, you'll do it in a form of a series. I know, I know, I'm a kind of a crazy dude, but, uh, the, the message that I want to share is, is that we need to take risk. And when, when we launched the AR, I can tell you it was a personal risk for me because I was in Cairns. I had a very pushy boss that, thank God, he, he left, and now I'm kind of a, the new boss, so, okay? <laughs> but he, may, he made me launch the format in Cairns. He made me launch it, and without any safety that it was working. I had like a beta uh, demo. And basically, after Cannes, it was crazy. A lot of clients wanted to do it, and after uh, 60 days, we were doing the first project of AR. So it's worth the, 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 this path to take risk. So just as a recap, I put the two insights uh, below about the emotional score. Like, don't, it's easy to approve a commercial, uh, an advertising piece that is informative, that, you know, it's, Basically, you are checking all the, the, your element in the, in the briefing. But it won't generate any kind of emotion. And advertising, it's exactly that. You want to do a shift that will put the consumer in a place that is not even thinking why he's going to buy this cell phone that costs $2,000. Because he's fascinated by, by the brand. It's not only about advertising. It's, it's about your experience in store. It's about everything. Unpacking your product. But advertising needs to be in this space of amazing the user experience. And I'm not gonna read all the, all the, the, the different uh, uh, elements, the six tips that I shared, but it's basically, I just wanted to show you the, the recap of uh, going from uh, you know, being brave, taking risks, but some, some stuff that are also pretty straightforward as putting the product at the center. Uh, last thing, uh, I tried before you enter the room, I really tried to check if uh, this QR code would work, but I know there's a difficulty in terms of distance with your cell phone, but uh, probably the first five rows will be able, but if you stand up, 
and you want to have access to this presentation, you just point your camera on this QR code. It will open. It's working down there. Oh, great. And so all the room. Great. Thank you. So I created a small website, a recap of the presentation. You can request the download of the, of the file. It will be a pleasure. I'm just asking for your name and uh, company uh, and the name uh, and email. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I want to thank you all. I hope that you like it, enjoy it, and I think we're going to take some questions. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Awesome. That's great. Have a seat. Uh, I'm personally uh, thrilled by, I mean, you are creative by nature, and so emotion is going to be an awful lot of what you believe in and what you talk about, and certainly the demonstrations that you had. Um, so first of all, there's a hashtag up here. If you've got any questions, make sure you fire them, and I'll keep looking uh, here. But the first question I'm going to ask is actually based on a quick conversation that you and I had here, where you talked about this company you're part of, 700 plus, and yet the creative team and the folks who are trying to think of where could you take this is a tiny little group, a half a dozen or so. So h how do you keep this inspirational thinking alive when you've got a lot of very left brain programmers and, and kind of real metric driven people that are the majority of the company. How do you, in your role, help keeping Teeds at the forefront of, of what you need to do and can do for your clients? So I, I don't think it's for, uh, yeah, even though I've got the title as global creative director, I think the, the owners of the company, they were brilliant enough to embrace stuff that they don't understand uh, so, for example, uh, as a tech company, as a, uh, the engineer team is at the center, the core of the, our uh, value proposition. But when you look at the story of TIDS, TIDS actually was a company that was acquired by the company that we are coming from. Uh, and uh, the original company uh, was called uh, uh, RGA, do you have the name? Can you? eBuzzing. So eBuzzing was actually a, a, a marketplace for advertising, but much more for uh, blo blogs. And what made the merger of this, those two companies successful was that we have the brain, the technology expertise, but also we had a, a, an amazing sales team, an mm. amazing team of having relationship with clients that put us today in a situation that we, we are engaging conversation and relationship with the top 500 companies all over the world, and we have a, like a truly uh, partnerships right. with them. Right. Uh, as creative, it's fairly new at TIDS. We, we acquired a company, a platform, to make a creative optimization such as the one that I'm uh, showing you. But it was, again, a mindset as, oh, I'm buying a platform. I'm buy buying a, uh, an enabler. Exactly. Uh, so it's a tech company that is buying another tech company that tapped, tapped into the creative space. Right. But suddenly the company, after six months, and I joined exactly at this moment, uh, they realized that the real value wasn't giving access to this platform. It was the team that we were building that was very, very small at the beginning. So I started at TIDS in Latin America and Brazil. I had one designer. And maybe there were like 12 designers, 15 designers all around the world, and a couple of creative strategies like me. And uh, it was a fight, actually. Mm -hmm. It was something like feeling sometimes that you are a fish that is uh, you know, not at the right place, right. Uh, out of the water, because you want to engage in conversation with clients about their briefing, their strategy. And you are in a company that is about technology and is selling a media service. Right. You know? right. But it's exciting. I think right. it's just a question of, uh, I'm not patient. So my boss have a lot of hard time with me because I always <laughs> complain. I want the things to go faster and so stuff like that. But on the other end, is uh, it's a very interesting culture uh, right. as a company. I'm, I'm super. I think that the common, the thing that I am the, with the people that I work for uh, with at Tids, we are all very proud of what we do because somehow like respecting the user experience, doing stuff that the user like, and being able to to help advert, uh, publishers uh, that are suffering a lot, actually, right. you know, because right. the duopoly that is driving 80% of the media investment in advertising is not helping uh, much the, the publishers. Yeah. And the publishers are, are creating 
professionally produce content, they need to hire very good uh, uh, editors, journalists, it's, it's, it's hard for them. Mm -hmm. And it's important right now, when we look at the last year and a half with fake news, election process that are disrupted by a lot of things that we know that are not right, I think it's kind of cool to work in the, to a company that is helping you know the real the real thing the industry that is really investing in true yeah. content. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, trust is a big conversation point that we've had uh, a lot over the last little while. How much of the work that you do is directly with clients or is in collaboration with an agency? So we are super uh, flexible about that. We don't have uh, we work. Uh, I can give you a practical example in Brazil. I was working with a media agency from General Motors that were very engaged with what we were doing. They were delivering the assets pr probably 24 hours before the campaign was going live. We were optimizing it and they were validating it. I don't know how they did that. I think they had a very close relationship with the client. Right. And we were doing a lot of things. Same thing with, uh, for example, White and Kennedy in Japan. I was in Japan uh, uh, last week. They delivered uh, the briefing, the assets. Uh, 48 hours later, I was delivering them uh, some creative that we optimized for Audi, that it's a client, a new uh, client, that, a new client for them. Uh, and the reason why we are doing that with Widen is probably because Audi asked them <laughs> right. to do that, right? right. But right. after you do this kind of thing with them and they see the value, there's a lot of creative agency that now proactively they call us. They say, "Hey, yeah. can you help you? Yeah. I've got this." This campaign, I'm not sure how to make it work in mobile, so it's like a consultancy approach for us. It's sure. fascinating. Sure. So we can help media agency, creative agencies, that, that, and having a relationship, relationship directly yeah. with clients. Yeah, once you get over that not invented here syndrome that some agencies have, uh, I would suspect that it would lead to great collaboration. Totally. And look, the examples that I shared, I'm, we're DJ. We are not a creative agency. I'm remixing. I'm extracting a piece of thing and use, re reutilizing a key, key visual, but I'm not proposing a new tagline. I'm not creating a new concept. I, I, I did that uh, in agency for 12 years, but that's not my profession. I, I, I need to stick to the optimization of advertising for, for mobile. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing here of uh, you know, sharing uh, uh, research insights, tips, I'm doing that like every week with a lot of clients because at some point my objective would be to kill my own job mm -hmm. because the content that the brand are creating should be already optimized. We are, you, you, you know that digital advertising are already surpass uh, traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mobile advertising in 2022 will surpass all the rest mm -hmm. of the, the, the advertising. Does it make sense? to validate 30-second ad at the agency in a large TV. At least what I would ask to a marketer is that when you're validating an offline or online version, ask someone to send it to your mobile device mm -hmm. and see it on your mobile mm -hmm. and see it with and without sound. Because the, you know, the power that the marketer has is, um, is huge. If you are asking the client to make a, an ad that will need to work on, on, in, in a sound off environment, they will follow your lead. That's right. obvious. Right. So there's a lot of responsibility, I think, right. on the marketer side. Right. So you've got a lot of things that can come into play to give you inf inspiration for the work that you're doing. You've got a brief that you're going to get either from the client or the agency. You've got a bunch of assets that maybe they have considered only in one kind of narrow way for deployment and you're kind of rethinking. You've got maybe some research that you have on hand that's going to open your eyes to an insight that maybe they overlooked. And, and then finally, you've got your expertise that you have done a lot of this. Is one more than the other kind of the lead, the thin edge of the wedge for you to get to a great place? There's one more thing okay. that is making all the difference. Speed. Right. Uh, our speed of the technology? No, no, no. Speed of, of what we do, okay. the kind of optimization. Okay. So uh, I want to share, I don't even know if I can say that in public, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I was in Geneva a couple of weeks ago for a workshop uh, with uh, all the beauty brands, global, like global guys in marketing, uh, ladies and guys. And uh, it was amazing, actually, for me, because uh, I, I had access in this workshop. 
I could see how the YouTube people and Facebook people, they promote themselves mm -hmm. in this kind of situation. So I was, you know, kind of spying them. And at some point during the presentation, uh, uh, um, someone from YouTube was really proud to say that YouTube does 8,000 creative optimization a year for clients. So 8,000 campaigns that were optimized using insights, using the technology right. to make advertising work better. Uh, in 2018, at TIDS, we did 56,000 campaigns. <laughs> With a team that is probably one third of their size, right. and our SLA, it means that I'll, I will be fired if I don't do that, is when I receive a briefing and the assets, I've got five working days to deliver a unit. Right, and right. We, and we do that, so speed, for me, right. is critical. Why? Imagine when I started advertising, the, I, I, my main account was ABI in Brazil. We were planning campaigns sometimes a year and a half before. Research, quality, quantitative, uh, product, uh, branding, uh, uh, and then suddenly, 15 days to shoot the, the ad, two months of campaign, and then after a month, you're looking at the results, how it was the, in terms of brand health and also sales. Well, how, what was your, your impact in terms of uh, business? It doesn't make sense anymore. We, mm -hmm. can't, we, we are not working, like, it's impossible to work like that because the, the world is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. In a year and a half, you could have a, a new Facebook. Sure. You could have, a, a lot of things will happen and will impact the behavior of the user. So now, we need as, as brands uh, and brand experts to be able to plan shorter, execute, and most importantly, when you are running a campaign live, you need to have the ability to optimize it. Yeah. If you need 15 days or three weeks to tweak a content, you're, you, you're lost. Yeah. So our turnaround is not only about, hey, we need to run the campaign, it's also after three, four, five days, we analyze data, we can do better. Right. This unit is, is below benchmark. It's not just quick to market, it's quick to respond exactly. to whatever's going on. So real-time real marketing is kind of being redefined, not just by what is the competition doing that I need to deliver against, but how is technology evolving that I can and should be taking advantage of as a result of that. So. Yeah, but you know about that, there's a lot of people that will promise you real-time advertising, yeah. but really, really few that can apply it because because on the other side, I can tell you, when, when I'm with a client that I'm, I'm dedicating or dedicating part of my team to make this happen, there's a condition. Mm. You need to be available. Yeah. And yeah. no, I, if I send you an optimized version and you take six days to approve it, yeah. I won't do it again. Yeah. You need to be part of this <laughs> game. It needs to be fast. A couple of uh, questions from the audience. Um, uh, you showed a great Burberry ad. Uh, saw this uh, person saw a Turkish Airlines ad directed by Ridley Scott. I mean, high end, high performance kind of Hollywood space. Are, are long Hollywood ads a growing trend now? Is this a blip or is this a growing trend that you're going to see more of? Uh, uh, what I would tell you is that there's another presentation that I was planning to do here. It's an, another. It's another way to to understand how. Do you to have another QR code you can share? For yeah, actually, it was <laughs> in my presentation. I removed. But if someone want to have access, it's about digital trends, but not in the media uh, way of approaching it, but much more on the on the content. That is uh, one of the trends is called choice and immersion. That is exactly the example that I show about Burberry. That uh, advertising is very powerful and experience to call the attention. So it would be the same as me. I'm here and I'm telling you, hey, hey, pay attention to me. Not him, me. I've got something relevant to tell you. And then suddenly you say, okay. And I've got 15 seconds. I've got, a, you know, I, I learned three sentences and I tell you that. And you say, no, no, but I want, I want to know more. Uh, and you say the 15 seconds again and the 15 seconds again. Advertising is successful to hook attention, but we are not prepared when the user wants more. Mm -hmm. So for me, creating long form of content is somehow a way to enable users that will be willing to engage more in your brand 
to have content. Right. But it's not only about long form of content, it's also about having a, a fucking awesome website mm -hmm. or an app that has a super relevant uh, mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. It's about in con continuously engaging with the user or a partnership like uh, the weed company with Uber. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's really making the user experience on, 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 uh, as a concept, uh, a bigger concept, right. being positive and people will spend time And being two-way, yeah. this idea that I, yeah, it's a I, conversation. I, I don't think that necessarily it's a question of Hollywood content. I okay. don't think it, it, it is because I've got, a, uh, there's a couple of examples for uh, an example. There's a McDonald video ad that was done by an agency in Brazil, uh, DDB, so uh, uh, for McDonald's. It's a three minute point 45 seconds. It was done by the social media team, $20,000 to create it. <laughs> but they test a new way to, to tell the story. So the storytelling is not linear. We call it the storytelling a heartbeat because each situation that happened, it makes me you want to discover what is the next situation. Do you know what is the average uh, time on Facebook that is a shitty platform for in view time? Mm -hmm. This content was a two minute point forty second wow. average. So twenty thousand dollars. Two thirds of that is being consumed. I mean that's engagement to, to me. That yeah, is, yeah, but it's is. not about Hollywood. Right. It's not about Ridley Scott. Right. It's about storytelling you know, with emotion. Exactly, and oh, oh, just just one thing that is important about this uh, this creative that I show about Thomas Burberry, it was a, a tragedy. Uh, the team of the, from what I heard, like the team of marketing was cut after this. Really? Not because the content was bad, because the strategy that was put in place to amplify this campaign was not good. Mm. Because you know you have a large content. But then in digital, you need to optimize it. Mm. You need to understand that when you launch the campaign, people will probably not be interested in engage three minute point 40 seconds with you. Maybe you need to explode your content in several different pieces and spread it and track the reaction. So it's, you need to strategize, strategize mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. this. Uh, so I don't think that long form of content is the answer. Right. It's having the wide scope right. from short, mid and long form of content and leveraging that uh, and giving control to the user as well. Right. I think it's, uh, yeah. it's really important. So on the strategy point that you're just talking about, I'm curious how often you've run upon a conversation with a client, they've given you a briefing and you have some concerns about the brief and how you can execute it and you push back to the strategy and you discover maybe there's, you would have a different strategy to maximize the use of your particular platform. H how often do you push back on a client and say, I think you need to tweak your strategy a little bit in order for us to maximize the success for you? Yeah, it's a very good question. So first of all, I would tell you that I, I don't argue. I, I present them a solution that I, that I believe. Yep. And if it's, I'm gonna give you a practical example about that. Okay. Typical briefing strategy, and I did that, okay? I did that as, as I was head of strategy at J. Walter Thompson, Isobar, I did that with clients. We have this illusion that we are in control when we manage a brand. So we decide that the first 10 days, it's teaser. So you don't know nothing about my new product, <laughs> and I'm gonna tease you. Then, I decide that during three weeks, I'm gonna generate awareness about this product, but don't buy it yet. <laughs> then after three weeks, there's another three to four weeks uh, phase that is about consideration. So you are bringing more information about your product, the different colors, the different, so you are educating the user, the audience about your product because now you are convinced, but don't buy it. I'm convincing <laughs> you and wait. After six or seven weeks of campaign, now in the conversion phase, so please buy it now. Does it make sense? Doesn't make sense at all. Like it's a, it's a total illusion. Like we are not in control most of the time when you are teasing a campaign, your most valuable cost customers, they already know everything about your new product because it was spoken in several blogs and they are just waiting to buy it. The unit that I showed with Jennifer Lawrence, how can you classify it? It's awareness, consideration, or, or, or uh, a transactional right, one. Right. It's the three of them. Right. The user yeah. is, is in control. He yeah. will choose whatever he wants to do. So 
it's very hard for the human being to admit that we, he's not in control. Yeah. I've got two daughters. I can tell you that now I'm really learning that I'm not in control. <laughs> and I'm enjoying like a lot. <laughs> but uh, I think that as a marketer and even myself, I get caught in conversation with brand that I say, oh, I'm fucking arrogant, man. Why am I telling them that I'm so sure that it's going to work? Right. I don't know. Right. Let's test it. Right. Let's put it live and look at the data. Right. Yeah. One final question because yep. we're running out of time. So, you know, some of what you are doing is, uh, you know, taking an idea and extending it into a new medium. Some of what you're doing is probably a little bit of uh, education with uh, marketers about kind of a whole new way of thinking and the potential to, uh, as you say, reinvigorate uh, the press as a viable media to consume. So what does success look like for you in a typical campaign that you've done with somebody? Is it about the metrics? Is it about opening a client's eyes to a new way of thinking? Uh, tell me a little bit about what success looks like for you. For me personally, I think that what excited me the most is to be aligned with uh, the, I would say the briefing, but to be aligned with the strategy. Right. Uh, real outcome, normally it means that what you have created is intimately connected with the objective of the brand. So as an example, you want to premium, give a, a reposition your product in, in some kind of a premium space and your brand is, that's, that's a huge challenge, mm. right? So when you are able to embrace what has been done in terms of advertising campaign and put one more layer, help maybe 10%, 20% more to give this perception of, of premiumness for this specific case, I think it's very satisfying for me because both clients, the consumer, everyone, it's a win-win situation because you know that you are doing the, the... So I would tell you that I'm creative right now at it, but I'm a creative strategist. I'm, I'm right. really, really into being aligned and doing, I, I hate when I receive a client and they tell me, I want to do AR, why? No, I want to do AR, why? Tell me your briefing, mm -hmm. what your objective is. Mm -hmm. What are and you trying I, to achieve? What here? you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe I will come up with something that is blowing your cell phone, yeah. because it makes sense. Yeah. And it's not AR. But the client will be happy because <laughs> it's disruptive. Right? So, That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very thank much, Poka, for sharing your thoughts. Thanks for your questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That was good.